Okay, this is a new type of video right here, and it's one that um, I've suggested to people before, but I, I don't know, people are kind of reluctant to do it, or, you know what I mean, most people don't need this type of instruction. Usually I can give people tips uh, via email or whatever, but when people are kind of getting started um, with their techniques, I've uh, invited them to um, send in their pieces that they've done, and I'll kind of give a little bit of a critique as far as technique goes, and I'll show them um, what they can do uh, technique-wise to kind of expedite their uh, learning curve and uh, once they get past the basics maybe what they can do potentially just to with some very simple techniques how to kind of boost um, their uh, I don't know their kind of visual vocabulary as far as the types of things that they can add to their scenes okay and I'm not going to be doing this video like, okay, let's add these four other d types of designs. The whole idea is just to um, kind of give them ideas as far as technique goes um, using the existing media and designs that they already have. Okay, so anyways, um, we have three scenes here from Julia. I won't say where they're from. They didn't tell me to do that. But uh, anyways, we'll take a look at these. And um, two of these are on glossy paper of some sort. I'm not quite sure the brand, though. Um, and I'm not quite sure of what exact inks they've used. I know they have Distress and Marvy, but I'm not sure if they've used both of them um, in every one of these cards or whatnot. Okay, so these two Lakeside Cabin ones are on glossy and this one's on a mat. All right. Now, I, I mean, I can take a look at these and she's a beginner in terms of the technique of uh, dye basting some glossy cardstock and layering them, but she's really coming along very nicely in terms of her kind of um, her sensibilities in terms of lighting and um, ink applications in terms of the layering of, of them go. So what I'm doing is I'm mostly going to be talking about kind of that next step and little tweaks here and there that I can see in these uh, pieces that can be applied. And, you know, what we're talking about um, from this point, it's really more about preference, okay? It's not, you know, okay, they lack something, okay? I'm just showing you the types of things that I would be doing. Okay, so that being said, let's start off with, how about this one? By the way, I, this is not a stamping injury, it was a cooking injury, a really stupid one. <laughs> Doing these uh, scenes right here is a perfect opportunity for me because I don't have to get too inky and get this bandage all kind of inked up right away. So, anyways, we'll see what I can do um, kind of with my... Uh, I don't know, four fingers, you know, not using this one. Sorry that this one's going to get in the way sometimes, but uh, I'll try to uh, remember that. Okay, now, first of all, um, on this scene right here, they were using a brand new pad, okay, and it was one of those um, Marvy blank pads that they have gone and inked up, and we can just tell immediately that... Yeah, when you're inking up these pads, it's not like re-inking them, okay? It's when you're inking them up from scratch, it's kind of weird. You really have to let that ink um, soak into the pad for a while and try not to over-ink it. When you first start inking up one of their blank pads that Marvy sells now because they no longer sell the dedicated colored pad, you know, or, you know, dedicated color, yeah, ink pad, they only sell blanks and they sell their re-inkers, okay? And what you do is you ink them up. I have a video on this, by the way. And it seems like it only soaks down, like, I don't know, halfway, and then you kind of have to let it sit for a while. But if you really ink it up to the point where you can see the whole thing fill up, I believe that's kind of over-inking it. Um, so you really have to let that settle in. And it takes a long time because the ink pad material, the foam, is really, really dense. And I think that's what's happened here, okay? So we're not going to talk about, you know, media here. I mean, it's obviously been over-inked, okay? But I think this is still looking really great in terms of um, technique, you know, here. And that's the important thing, you know, when you're starting off. You want to get into the concepts of things, okay? But, okay, now look at right here. We have this large opening, and it's basically a circle of light like that, right? Okay? 
Now we have the images stamped over it, but there's no kind of you know, um, variation within these spaces. Now for my eye, that's where something like this can come into play, okay? Now I'm just going to go with some different inks right here. You don't have to use mementos or whatnot. But this is going through um, a range of blue tones, okay? And what you largely see is about a tone about like this. It's a medium tone blue. And it goes to about right here and it ends abruptly, okay? You can use that for certain effects, like a, a really hard edge, kind of a kind of lighting reflection down on the water where it just ends. But one of the things that I like to do is I like to add in shadows, like at the base of water, okay? And water, I find, has these kind of striations across it, these horizontal lines going throughout. So oftentimes what you see when I do scenes in sky and in water, what I'm doing is I'm going with this type of technique right here, and I'm streaking that across like that from the um, edge of the cards inward, okay? So if I'm doing it from this side of the scene, I'll stroke it in that way, okay? Because it tapers off, right? I hit it like that, and then I pull like that. I don't keep it straight on and just lift off. I'm kind of coming at an angle like that. I touch down, and I come up like that. So it's like sweeping, you know? Not like a push broom, but like a, you know, whisk broom or whatnot, okay? And when I want to do it from the other side, I come in from the other side like this. Okay, now, the colors here are looking a little bit more anemic than they will, or than they were when she applied them onto the card. Now, if you've watched any of my videos on um, sealants and spray sealing, you'll know that this, you know, this card will get much more vibrant, okay? So anyways, what I'm doing is I'm coming into this area, okay? So there's not such a hard transition right here, okay? Of It looks like a quarter that's just been dropped there, and it, the, you know, the coloring just ends there. But do you see where I've kind of streaked that little color in there right now? Okay, and it's very light because it's dry by the time I've started here, and I've swept that way, okay? So I'm going to do that a little bit more. And I like hitting it down here in the shadows too, right at the base of the objects, because that kind of anchors the object. So it's not just an image sitting on top of there. So what I'm doing is I'm working that streaky action like that in the water, which is kind of more, uh, it's more, uh, I haven't done videos lately. <laughs> I'm at a for loss for words. It's um, it, it, indicative. It's more indicative of the horizontal kind of striations on water, okay? So you'll see me build these up. Okay, now I'm going to build up a little more shadows in here. Now the color on here is already kind of darker than this memento, so this is kind of serving me working on it at this point in time just to kind of re-lubricate these areas even though in these darker areas you know we won't really be able to see any difference it's kind of getting wetter so it looks a little bit darker but if i allow this just to set up and dry you won't really be able to see any difference at all okay so same thing with the sky if it was sunset colors i'd be doing this in yellows and oranges or something like that but see this right here see that it's just kind of creating a kind of more gentle kind of transition from right over here. It doesn't just end like in a, uh, I don't know, like a half dollar type of thing. Like a coin has been placed right here and it just ends abruptly, okay? I still want to retain that nice lighting though that she has established here very, very well. And uh, especially for being such a new um, kind of a practitioner of this particular technique right here. She has left her um, rooftop nice and light like that. And that looks really good. Now, one of the questions that she had for me after she has done this scene right here, this, she says, how do you know when to do the background or the or the images first what comes first do you do you know what images can you do the background first and just stamp right over it or do you the ones where you have to stamp the image first 
and then color around it. Okay, now this is a perfect example for her though. She could have just observed her piece right here. On these pieces right here, she has kept her rooftop light and she has also colored in the, um, the interior of that scene with yellow, okay? Now if I just had an amorphic kind of background with blue swatches going in here, and I stamp that cabin right on top of there, that blue would be showing up right in the cabin, right? Or uh, right in the cabin in that window. And blue would probably be in that rooftop right there, unless when I was applying ink, I just happened to know exactly where I was going to stamp that, but that would be very hard, right? So that's a perfect example of why you would stamp this one first and then color around it because you can kind of dictate what remains light or, in this case, light and a different color. Okay? Does that make sense? All right, so adding this on right now, I'm going over her um, gel pen dots that she's applied very well, too. Okay, so that's a Memento Bahama Blue right there, okay? What I've done right here is very subtle, but there's a little bit more of a transition working right throughout here. Okay, now we have this kind of blotchier impressions of the stamp, which is not her fault. It was just, you know, it was an over-inking of the pad. And it's, for me, it was very hard to tell, you know, how much ink to put in there as well, you know, when I was, when I just got it, you know, the pad. I've only inked, I think, one re-inker so far. Okay, so what I'm going to do here now, this is kind of another uh, method um, that you can use here to kind of obscure some of those um, blotchier impressions, okay? We're going to use black too, um, but we can also do some... I'm trying to see if this black here is... Really, really. Oh, here, let me switch off. It looks like I have an, a couple different kind of darker blue tones here. Okay, let's see right here. Now, if you've watched any of my videos in the past, oh boy, I need some uh, I'm out of paper towels here. That's okay. I'll blot this off right here, okay? And let's see here. Tempted to just wipe this off with this built-in kind of blotter now that I have on my finger. Um, let's put some background trees in the background, okay? So she has stamped out her trees in black here. Yeah, she's, yeah, she knows what she's doing here. See, she stamped them out in a lighter tone right here. Um, to create distance when you stamp out your imagery in multiple values. The lighter valued impressions are always going to read as uh, more distant ones. Okay, so you see a little bit of that right back in there. It's very subtle, okay? Maybe I won't be too subtle on another impression over here. Let's keep it fairly dark. Meh, you know, because the scene itself is fairly dark. But always better to be safe than sorry. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so we see some background trees right in there. It hasn't merged in yet because I need to blend in those trees using the same color ink that I stamped out my impressions in. And that's one of the things I see right here in this one right here. The trees have been stamped in a certain color, but that color needs to be utilized in the blending process as well. It looks to me like a... Oh, not quite this color... That's pale, pale green. It looks to me like the turquoise, doesn't it, to you? I think she has used turquoise as a background image, but the turquoise has not been utilized. So we'll utilize this one, that color, in the blending of this one too. And that'll kind of incorporate those trees into the background a little bit more, okay? Because you're saying that uh, a turquoise light is reflecting off of that, those trees there, but it's not being utilized in the blending process, so it, it's not reading as a um, light, okay? All right, so let's take and add this in here. So any colors that you stamp out your images in, I would always recommend toning in at least somewhere in the scene 
with that same color because you're we're um, representing light when it comes to this okay okay so same type of thing remember that streaking action like that okay stay in one area too like this and build that streak okay and then I'm kind of leaving a little space in between the streaks like that otherwise it just reads a straight color okay this is kind of like collaboration um, instruction which is really fun I enjoy uh, collaborating with uh, people Okay, see how that those trees, those blue trees, are st really starting to kind of blend into that surrounding area because it has a common color now. Okay, so now remember when you start off with a a certain color of image, okay, two. In this case, it's black, which a lot of scenes will have. It's good to tone into the shadows in that same value at some point in time. It could be just a small area, and it doesn't have to be around the whole perimeter like this. You can just have it in the shadows somewhere, and it doesn't even have to read as black. It can read. You can use the same color, but actually, it's dark. That's bottle green. It's a good thing I have a little bit better lighting in my studio than few years ago. I used to use just a couple swing arm lamps and it's very dark but anyways okay so doing that same type of thing with black but it's not reading as black it reads more as like a dark uh, I don't know I'd say, actually it's even like a light gray color but the more I lay down it's kind of like increasing each streak by about I don't know, a couple percent maybe. I mean, even that right there, going over it several times, it's more like a 30% gray maybe, okay? So you can see, even when you're working with black, you can really have a lot of control over it. It's when people try to rush it, and they go like this, and they say, hey, I'm getting my edges showing, right? But you don't really apply it like that. I mean, you could if you want to go for some kind of, you know, statement in terms of uh, texture. But by and large, I think it's better to, well, at least when you're learning to maybe a, kind of exercise a little bit more kind of restraint until you get kind of a good control over those um, values that you're using. I always recommend that people go with a monochromatic just only using black to create scenes, okay? Just as an exercise. It's like kind of learning the fundamentals and when they really get a good hold or a good um, kind of feel for um, the darker tones it really helps them out when they utilize the darker hues or values of hue that they're using so darker blues darker whatever browns everything like that everything is so much easier if you have kind of a mastery of black you know, because I just say black because that one's, you know, potentially the darkest you can go with. So if you can blend and describe value using that color, you can pretty much control everything. Okay, now see how this black is really bringing everything together? I mean, for me, my eye, it, it is because all of these trees in the background were so strong in terms of their values this is the degree of shading that needed to be introduced to bring it all together so it's that same hue okay or, or same value that is now incorporating it at all okay now I don't feel that I've made the scene a lot darker you know I mean it did get darker but by making certain areas darker, okay, I feel that 
it looks a lot lighter in the lighter areas, but I even brought some of that tone into the lighter areas. So I really cut down on the amount of light in there, right? But just by contrast, since it's darker in the couple corners like that and streaked in, okay, but it doesn't look black right here, right? But I did go in to there, but it's just with a very light shade like that, right? But look how much more developed this is in terms of the lighting scheme. So I think, you know, there was nothing that was done wrong with this scene. I think it was an excellent execution here. But what we're doing right here is we're just kind of taking it, I think, to the next level. And it looks a little bit more textured, okay? But it's not textured like this, all right? Okay? It's textured in just kind of a nice, harmonious way that's um, conducive to the look of water, okay? So when you get into things like nature, water and clouds and whatnot, they do have, it's, it's like you're bringing in a sense of air into it, you know, and the way maybe air in terms of wind or something like that would affect the surface of that water down there, okay? All right, now, we have that. Now, see, she has her reeds down here, okay? Looking pretty good. Let me see if I have that stamp right here. I do, okay. Now, what I'm going to do, too, and I think... I can't remember if she said she has a Versafine or not, but I'm going to use it on here, okay? Having a really dark, deep black is a good thing. And having more than one is even better. Okay, so this one's pigmenting. Versifying is a pigmenting, and it really stands out against that background. And I feel that this piece could use a nice strong foreground, okay, to kind of balance out this really super dark interior here, okay? So, Let's kind of, I'm not trying to stamp over the reeds that she's already stamped. Those are black and, you know, pretty dark. But if I go over it with the Versafine, her black impressions are going to seem, you know, lighter by contrast. Let me see if I can get this in view here. Okay. All right, see that, how much darker it is than over here? This is stamped in a darker area, but I don't know if you can tell. Let's do the same thing for over here. Okay, now what she's done is really good, but what I'm doing is layering, okay? So we have some darker impressions in the foreground, and we also have some lighter impressions. So her impressions are complementing these darker ones because you have a little bit of depth in that foreground right there, okay? And it's just using the same exact stamp. Look at these right here. Doesn't that seem to be kind of a deeper space now than before? All right, now, um, one of the things that she has as well is pigment ink, okay? White pigment ink. And... Uh, Kind of learning how to utilize this is, I feel, <laughs> a really uh, potentially strong um, tool in your arsenal. It's lighting. It's a positive um, kind of a positive meaning, an additive um, aspect of lighting. Usually, we're defining light through the use of shadow, okay? This is a white piece of paper to begin with, right? Okay, so take a look at this right here. This right in here gets very strong, which is good, but I feel that everything's fairly harsh right here, okay? Now, there's not a lot of white in here, so I'm not going to be adding this um, in too many areas, okay? Because what you're saying, if you're adding white into a given area, is that a white light is hitting that given space. Okay, so let's go in here and 
add some of this. So I'm going to soften some of that, those harsher kind of uh, um, impressions. Okay, it, I, I, don't, I just mean harsh in terms of that over-inked black stamp pad, okay. So, I'm adding it down, but you do, do you notice I'm not adding it over that entire space, okay? That's not how light works. It's, well, it could if you're like in a whiteout or something like that. <clears throat> if you're a hiker, you might know what I'm talking about, you know, when everything's just, you're walking in a cloud, basically. But this right here is just kind of, it, it's being backlit, okay? So that light is coming from around those trees, right? But we don't have a, it's not being front lit, it's being back lit, because the back, you know, the lighting is back there. But see these trees back in here too? But see that lighting right in there? <clears throat> I think that's really fun in terms of a textural standpoint, but it also creates distance. Because you're saying that there's moisture in the air back there and light is reflecting off it. And thus we have fog or, you know, whatever it is. Um, fog or just, I don't know, suspended moisture in the air. Okay. All right, so we have, we have that up there. That's where light meets dark, right? And I'll add it down here. This is where light meets dark here, too but I'm not adding it everywhere. I'm just kind of oscillating it a little bit. Everyone always puts way too much ink on their Q-tips, and I always mention that, but I understand it because I, my uh, ink pads, my white ink pads, they're super juicy too, and sometimes I put too much ink on my applicator, whatever I happen to be using, cotton ball, Q-tip, whatever. And I put too much on, too. So, I can't overemphasize just how important consistency is. If you want it to go on very lightly, anything, then you don't apply a big sloppy blob of an amount of ink on your applicator down like that, right? If you want it to be a soft application of something, then you have a very minimal amount of it on your applicator, okay? So kind of adding this down, this is kind of harmonizing with those really thick impressions there too, see? It gets a little dark in here, so I'm not going to add too much in that area, but see that right in there? It's kind of hovering around, but I didn't cover it in some areas, in some areas I did. But look at that lighting right back in there. This is just over, you know, I stamped, you know, a couple of those trees in there, but this is just over her piece right here. And, I don't know. I mean, if someone saw this piece right here, you know, I don't, I don't know if people would think, oh, that's, uh, you know, not my piece, uh, you know, my 1,000th, I don't know, 5,000, 10,000 scene. This is someone that's just learning how. And I'm just applying some of those tweaks to it, right? Using the existing media that she already has over kind of, you know, she did, uh, I don't know, whatever, 90% of the work in this piece right here. It's just kind of doing those little tweaks that can kind of bring things around like this, okay? So she set this up beautifully. And I will be sending these pieces back, so if anyone ever wants to send something in, and see what, see what the, you know, could potentially be done, it's a pretty good way to do it. If you're learning, if you want to learn these little techniques, now, inevitably, you know, people do these scenes like this, and if they're learning a given technique, like this one that I often use, you'll see it all the time. By the time people start doing it, they tweak it, and they make this technique their own. They might do it on different surfaces, their own kind of 
touch comes into play and it really becomes kind of their own thing uh, which I love you know because I'll see all kinds of variations and personal expression come about okay now this is kind of adding in some additional white paint I got these pens and I really love them um, it's an acrylic paint pen okay but again don't add it everywhere it's kind of really good where kind of light meets dark I mean I could do it you know have snow fall in here as well or something like that but okay now this light is kind of coming through here and I'm putting it on these tree limbs that are kind of facing that light area I'm not putting it in the dark areas because if it's dark you're saying that light isn't in there so you wouldn't have all these kind of sparkly reflections in there okay see down here in the water I can kind of add these little uh, bits of specular light down there. S light that's brighter than white. I didn't say spectacular white. I got corrected one time in a um, edit for a, an article in a magazine. Specular light is light that's brighter than white in photography. So it'd be like, you know, like this pen here. This is white right here, but kind of where you see this, <laughs> I'm not focusing right here. Let me see if I, like these little shiny bits on like right here, see that right there? It's, this is white, but that's brighter, right? Because it's light that's, you know, so on like a water surface, it would be like those little sparkly bits down here, okay? So see, I'm going in the same kind of striation that I applied my streaks in, except I'm doing the same thing with this pen right here. All right, now certain little things on like rocks, you know, you can put little highlights on the top sides of some rocks. There are highlights on my rocks designs. So I'm just going in and reiterating that, but look at that little sparkly uh, little surface like now. See that right down there, doesn't it? Kind of add a little bit of extra dimension down there. And let's see, it's fairly subtle in those trees. See that right in there? Those little dots. And then when you kind of hold it at arm's distance, it, you know, we're not, uh, you know, so aware of all these little dots or something like that. Highlights. It just reads as light in there. All right. So we can add some of those back there. You can add some of it in the foreground if you want to. Like so, if this pen will start working, okay. Kind of adding it like so here. You can have it on a few of these little reeds right here. Capturing some of that light. All right, now she, she had some stars out here too. Oh, and here's one thing that we all do with stars. Let me see if I can focus in. See how all these stars are right here? They're almost exactly a quarter inch apart, right? Well, you can do that if you wanna make a point on a kind of um, pattern or something like that. And I think that would be cool but I don't think that's what she was going for. You know, she wasn't going for a specific pattern in the sky. Um, but that's not how stars are kind of spaced. So what you want to do is you want to kind of uh, make it a little bit more irregular, okay? Sometimes. Make a little bigger star, smaller one. And I, when I say this about pattern, and spacing. I'm saying that to me as well because I do that. So every time I'm doing these little star pattern types of things, I kind of have to consciously um, space them out a little bit differently. Cluster here and there, right? Doesn't that look a little more natural? But doesn't that look good with her stars too? I went over, I toned them in. But doesn't it look good multi-toned so you can put a few stars in there 
color those stars and then go back in and have multi-valued stars in there so that they're not all the same. So it gives that area a little bit more depth. But look at this piece right here. Isn't this a fantastic piece? Using the exact same media. Well, I don't know if she has like this pen, but I know she has a, a gel pen. And it's, you know, that looks fine. All right, so let's move along here, okay? Uh, let's take a look. And like I said, um, that green right there is used, and it's only in that one area. Now, like I said, this piece has dried, okay? And it looked much more vibrant. And it will, you know, once it's sprayed. If she decides to, I don't know if she wants me to spray it, but um, um, it'll be much more vibrant. So there's that. Okay, now, let's see. I'm Thought I had a couple good non inked up tips right here. Okay, so let me go back in and I need to kind of moisten this whole scene again. Let me just go with a light blue, okay? It's not even going to be light blue, that's just. I need to very moisten this whole piece right here because it's dried. Now, this individual lives out in the desert, so desert country okay so um this probably gets really dry on her instantly too but i'm going back in and re-moistening this because when I, if I want to work with some of the darker tones so i'm going back in here with some of my lighter tones just to kind of provide a lubricant for the surface of the paper okay And again, an excellent composition. She has her lighting in here, but again, it's kind of like this. It's this hole right here, right? Now, I'll show you the only thing that I do differently from having that center kind of light right there, okay? And it's going to be very, very easy. You saw me do it on that one. I don't like this area right in here of uh, light. It could be like a little fog or something like that, but just in general, let's fill that in. And let's have that light coming from back there, okay? We have this row of trees right here. And if this is being backlit, you wouldn't have this area so lit right here. It looks more like a two-dimensional piece that's kind of front lit by like a spotlight or something like that, which is okay. You can, you know, I always say that you should make these kind of like little stages. But it looks, I want that cabin to stand out a little bit more. I want it to pop because it is the subject of this. It's the focal point of the scene right here. So in order to just make that stand out, we have to kind of make the area behind it a little bit darker. Okay, so this is just getting darker just by the very fact that it's kind of becoming moist on here. All right, but here's one thing on this one right here. See where this is kind of black right here? It's gray, but it just ends abruptly, and here's white, okay? So this is one of the darkest colors right here that has been used, but there's no transitions right here, so you always kind of want to add... Um, your darker colors become a little more perimeter-oriented, okay? So the darker you go, it goes light, medium, dark. This one just goes kind of dark, then white, okay? But that's fine, because she has done the most important thing here, which is to retain some light areas like that. Everyone always tones everything out um, early on when they're kind of learning this process right here, but she has retained her lighting beautifully. But it can just use a little bit more of a transition color or colors. Okay, so that is just kind of blending in. I was just using that because it's light, okay? All right, let's hit it with, um, I think I think she has used blue in here because I can see a little bit in there. It's, it's really been buried, though, underneath that other tone. Okay, so yeah, that looks better right there. It, it's more rich. 
And again, it's just, it looks that way too because it's wet right now, okay? If I, if I sprayed her piece right now, it would become much more vibrant and uh, full just for the fact that I'd sprayed, uh, sprayed it, okay? Which I haven't done right now, but, uh, but if I did. Okay, so anyways, kind of bringing in those tones, right? Those little striations across that area. Okay, hitting this with a little bit more blue. And right here I see one of the, some of those blacks right here. It's been toned like this. Okay, it's, this, it's been this type of action right here with black. Okay, can you see this right here? It's this shape, this shape, and this shape. It's my that, that, that. Okay, but you don't want to do that. You want to kind of blend in your tones like this, and you'll get that nice transition. You'll never get those shape of the tool if you blend like this. Now, you can blend like this, okay, this tapping motion, but see how I'm kind of staining that little area right there? And then I can get this trans... Oh, boy, I'm not on the paper here. So you can kind of tap it like this. And then I'm taking this in, but I'm utilizing the drier one. People re-ink too often when they and they don't utilize. I don't know what is that twenty taps? They don't utilize that that you know that dryness of the, uh, the sponge enough. So you want to really utilize your um. You really want to use the moisture content to your advantage. And I would say that I probably use the drier versions of every color that I use more than I do the wet ones, because when I start on the wet ones, I'm starting out here, right? But then, see, I keep utilizing it, right? I do far more taps by the time it gets very dry, I still, you know, have a pretty decent amount. But like I said, she lives in the desert, so she'll have to be re-inking more often, but maybe utilize that tenth tapping that's very dry in here, okay? Anyways, you can, can you see where this is going right now? It's getting a little bit more kind of involved, but I'm nowhere near black yet, and she has stamped out that image in black, so I have a long ways to go here. And it's not going to take forever. I'm just saying that I have to work through my tones to get to black, okay? All right, now let's go with this green here, okay? Eh, I think she used a... I think she used like a... Oh, it's more of a... Let me see, where are my green tones here? It's more of a straight green. Like something like this one right here, just called green, okay? The ones down here, I think, I think what she did now is I think she took that and she stamped it upside down using the drier version. Excellent technique. You know, because the reflections are often, you know, maybe not as... Um, I mean, sometimes they can be, you know, a lot of times they're not as intense as the objects themselves. All right, so... Now, I, you don't have to bring in this green into the coloring scheme, you know, the toning scheme around it. But she has kind of created this whole atmosphere, okay? If this was just green against a white sky, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't do this because you're just saying the trees are green and there's white light hitting it. But the similar tone is around there. So, we're saying that that is also kind of indicative of the lighting within this piece. So, I'm utilizing that green lighting now. I wouldn't say it's green lighting, it's just kind of a atmospheric kind of, you know, mist that's kind of a, of this certain um, hue. Okay, so right now it's kind of starting to blend in a little bit more. I 
think it's looking a little bit more rich. Okay. Looks good. I like her reflections down here. All right, let's bring in green, okay? This could be potentially really juicy. You know, always just kind of start it on the real outside perimeter. Anytime you kind of go on with another color, I don't know how wet that is. I don't use this color that often, so I was thinking it's probably really juicy. So you have to kind of take into consideration the value, you know, which is the relative light and darkness of a color and just how wet that pad is, okay? You don't want to go into it and it's, you know, you get these things everywhere, okay? Like I said, don't use that technique, but uh, you just have to be careful using certain colors that you don't use to very often because your pad will most likely be really quite wet and you'll be applying a very vibrant application of that color because you'll be applying kind of a slathering of it. Okay, adding a little bit of this down in the shadows as well. Okay, kind of coming around, right? Here's a bottle green. Now I'm just working up a, a value scale of dark greens, okay? Doesn't have to be the Marvy brand, okay? I'm just working up a range of values. And what I've recommended to people getting into um, dye based inks or to supplement what they have is just to have a nice range of hues, common hues, colors that they often use. In landscape stamping, you know, there's a lot of Blues, especially, and greens, you know, um, browns, quite often, you know, earthy kind of colors. Um, and to have kind of a, a range of them. It doesn't have to be a huge, you know, just light, medium, and dark. Okay, kind of coming around. That little cabin is standing out to me a little bit more the darker I go because contrast. Okay, now we're back to black. Now this is the one that, for me, really starts to bring pieces together if the main images have been stamped in black, okay? All right, so let's go in here and let's anchor this down. I'm kind of going on the side with my stylus tool if you're using a paintbrush or sponge, you can do this right here in a nice thin manner, kind of streaky. I'm going to kind of keep it streaky. I'm not just toning in the whole thing. I'm kind of coming into the piece a little bit, like so. And then I'm leaving some gaps between here. <laughs> Let me switch this out right here. Okay, I'm kind of coming like this. And then I'm coming like this, okay? So I get these spaces in between. See, I'm kind of starting it off my page and working my way in. Look how beautifully that streak right underneath that cabin is really anchoring that piece down now. Isn't it sitting into the scene a little bit more? Okay. Okay. Let's see what I can do with that water and that reflection down there. I'm not doing anything physically to the water, but I'm changing the area around it. And it thus changes it by contrast, by perception, okay? Yeah, the whole thing is there's no, you know, uh, perception is by contrast, they say, so there's no real light without dark and vice versa what's warm and what's cool you know to a uh, person like me in the uh, Southern California 
you know, if we get on the uh, calendar a, uh, you know, someday that doesn't get out of the 50s, uh, you know, that's, that's parka weather, you know, but someone in Maine coming out of the winter, you know, 50 degrees, that's, that's, uh, that's shorts, you know. So, it's all kind of relative. And it's perception is by contrast. Okay, so see this right here? I'm kind of capping the top, too. Otherwise, this is kind of bottom-heavy with tone, right? So if you kind of cap it off like that, since it's kind of a, a triangular thing, it's just because I'm kind of rounding it off like that, okay? See this like that? And I can kind of streak in a little bit. I think that background mountain is in gray, so it's either gray or a stamped out black, which is fantastic because that really creates that depth back there. So I'm kind of trying to create a little bit more of that gray with a very dry version of black. Okay? So it kind of harmonizes with that now a little bit more. We're saying that that kind of lighting is reflecting off of that. Um, mountain in the background. Okay, corners like this, bottom left and right. It's kind of doing a little bit of a stronger framing, you know, because this is a fairly bold composition with that, you know, Lakeside Cove stamped out in black. Okay, she's got a lot of depth in here. I'm just kind of pushing that depth a little bit more and containing all these different images. There's a lot of different components in this piece right here. It's simple yet complex in terms of her spacing in here. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of... I feel like I, I, what I'm doing is I'm kind of creating or at least I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create um, kind of staging for this type of um, kind of situation in here in terms of lighting and depth that she has established. Okay, so I've gone in here and I've added a little bit more tone. I've streaked in here things like like that little streak right there. See what that does to that little area? And I've come in this way. You guys just see what those little things do like that? And then, see how much stronger that is right down here, okay? Now, this is... Some of this is taking quite a bit. Now, it won't take that long, though. Um, if you're doing these scenes and, and kind of applying these um, different techniques or, I don't know, little tweaks from the get-go, okay? But what I had to do is I had to re-moisten this whole piece right here because it allows me to spread a wet, you know, black ink very easily because the surface is kind of moist again. But if you're doing this right from the get-go, you know... Um, your piece is already going to be moist. It's not going to be sitting, you know, sitting around for, you know, a few days before, you know, you get to doing the things that I'm doing on here. Okay, so we saw the um, the Versafine Black. Let's do the same thing on here, and I think that will look beautiful. By the way, that Versafine. It dries slowly in Southern California, but out there in Arizona. If it didn't dry, in the, I don't know, it might have dried just like a couple hours after I stamped it on glossy cardstock. It was awesome. <laughs> you know, that's, I love that uh, aspect. I was joking to someone, I'm gonna move out you know, to Arizona just because you know, my ink's dry you know, quickly. It doesn't, it's not good for those first couple layer colors, you know, but if you just kind of use a re-inker to do it, you know, it works fantastic. But sometimes when I'm trying to add on like my, my darker tones, like my fifth layer of color, you know, 
over the top of a kind of already wet moist um, surface it's hard to apply those colors but if they're drying and setting up quicker you know you can get right into those ones like you can out in a more arid um, atmosphere but look at those reeds down there see how full that is now okay so that's looking a little bit it's looking a little bit too um, intense with that green. That green's a very intense green up there. If I put something really vibrant and intense next to it, it wouldn't look, but I don't want to get more intense out there. I want to kind of subdue a little bit of that. Let me try this cotton ball. I need to re... I don't know. I need to get more supplies here. Right? Cotton balls. I just started using cotton balls, you know, relatively recently, you know. Uh, recent. And they work fantastic, but I was kind of using the ones that I already had. Okay, so we have this right here. And I'm going to use a decent amount of it, so I wanted maybe a little bit more than a Q-tip surface, okay? Fairly moist, okay? Blot it off. Oh, yeah, that was too wet. Get it the right consistency. You're dry brushing this on, okay? All right, let's see what we can do here. Okay, let me take a look here. Where um, light meets dark, okay? So, kind of in between those trees, or in those trees a little bit, like so. I think I have a little bit too much here. I'm kind of blotting it off a little bit. See, kind of adding a little bit of mist back in there. It kind of dulls out some of these trees, doesn't it? But see, isn't that kind of nicer? I like it in, in contrast, okay, so there's some brighter versions of it. And some dark, you know, and some uh, duller versions of it. Duller and lighter, okay? Duller, not in terms of boring or something like it, but duller in terms of intensity. Those trees stood out a little bit to me, but I want them to look farther back in the distance. And the farther the, an image, an object is in the distance, the less intense it becomes, okay? It's usually lighter and less intense. So that's what we're doing here. Okay, so see that right there? But these trees out here are fairly intense because they're in the dark, but when they're in the light, they're kind of being a little bit diffused or or diffused a lot, I don't know. And I can bring some of this into the, my foreground as well. I think on this one right here, she didn't stamp out the, the row of trees above there. It might have come after this one and she might have got a little gun shy about kind of pressing too hard. So it's missing a lot of it, but I don't know. That, I think that looks fine to me. Let's do that same type of thing down here in the water now, okay? Let's knock down some of these trees in terms of intensity, and they'll look a little bit lighter, too. So it's, you are kind of introducing a little bit of light in many ways into that area. Okay, now I have to be a little bit careful around these reeds because that versifying down there, that black is still really wet. All right, so see that right there? It's a little bit of a kind of foggy mist. Okay, now this piece right here is really kind of missing a crisp kind of um, uh, element. Okay, so let's go in here and add a little crisp element within this space, okay? Not outer space, but in terms of this little area down here. So, little highlights on those rocks, again, kind of capturing some of that light. Maybe some, you can see these little streaks in the water that I've drawn into the uh, reflections underneath the cabin. This is kind of giving it 
an additional surface, you know, when you put highlighting on something, okay? It's, it's um, reflective, or it's indicative of the surface that it is. You know, when you have things reflecting, the water can be a very reflective um, element. So you see what I'm doing here? I'm kind of adding those lighter elements in both a very fine, very soft way with the pigment ink. And then here I am adding the light element in a very crisp way with the, you know, gel pen or paint pen highlighting, okay? Okay, why don't we do some of those up in our trees like we did in the other piece and just kind of add some little highlights on some of these branches. You add more of it where there's light. Where it's dark, you're seeing that there's no light, so you wouldn't be having as many uh, reflections off of it, right? Okay, let's see that. I don't know if you can see it. It's very subtle. Yeah, kind of. Those are those little types of um, details that, you know, if you give a card to someone and if they kind of look at it uh, closely, you know, it's they're rewarded for kind of their closer inspection. Okay. All right, so, okay, so there's a little bit more in the lighter areas. And as I move out into these darker areas, I, you know, kind of spread those little dots apart. They're more sparse. And then the darkest areas, I don't have anything. So there's this transitioning degree of, uh, you know, highlighting going on. You can even put some on the little rooftop if you want to. Like, about like so. Okay, all right. Piece number two, how's that look? This is really fun for me because I'm working over um, someone else's piece, so I'm seeing some different types of uh, textures and things like that that I normally don't achieve in my own pieces, but I r really do like very much that are happening in here. It looks kind of watercolory in many ways, this... Uh, collaborative piece and also the way she works you know it looks like a you know in some ways very painterly to me which I think is very nice okay so here's another piece right here all right this one's on matte paper she's done an excellent job in here um, there's a lot of transitions of tone okay there's nothing in here that I you know think looks wrong okay but here's one thing that's going on with this piece right here do you see this this is stamped in black okay which is fine but there is no black around it though or transitioning it she stamped kind of a smaller portion of it because if it was stamped over here maybe her birds wouldn't show up or something like that okay so whatever reason those weren't stamped out you can always kind of stamp it out in a lighter version you can just kind of tap off the edge and stamp it out so it transitions a little bit more so but that being said okay now you see where these darker shades are like that it transitions and it just ends but you know what I always say on these pieces is I think it's good to kind of reiterate what's going on within the designs themselves you darken the shadows a little bit more of the tone um, you kind of develop them a little bit more you know, because right now I have just defined my shadows with the use of stippling, they're dots, okay? Okay, so there's a couple things that she could do. Um, she could have stamped this out in a color because usually 
um, shadows of something are the colors of that lighting that's within that space. That being said, you can stamp them in black too. Okay, it provides a little bit more contrast, okay? Um, when I say, you know, in terms of uh, things like lighting and whatnot, um, like this pad right here, or this color right here, okay? This pad right here is darker right over here than it is over here, right? So the shadows are darker versions of this existing color, okay? Right? We don't say, when I look at this pad here that's in the shadow right here, we don't, uh, you know, that that's more like an ochre, right? So the shadows in an area like this with that color lighting in there would probably be colors, you know, of this color scheme. So that being said, that's what I'm going to do this to this one. I'm going to bring in more of those same colors of this color scheme into these shadow areas and develop them a little bit more. Okay, and kind of make that black impression a little bit more related to the color scheme that has been so beautifully applied in here, okay? So, what does that mean? It's going back to what, what I just did before. I'm just kind of streaking in some colors like this, okay? Like that. That's the only thing that she's really missing, you know, to take, take her pieces, you know, from you know, a really awesome start to, I don't know, advanced? I don't know if that's what, you know. I, I tend to consider all of my techniques beginner because the way that I use my stamps is what I used to teach in my classes, you know, and everything that I'm teaching online. That's the stuff that I taught, you know, in Stampscaping 101. And everyone got it. Um, these are just, uh, and some people never stamped at all before, you know, in these workshops. Someone would be bringing a friend or whatever. They hadn't even picked up a pad before. So it's just kind of all about that. You know, it's all about the layering. I, I was teaching composition and things like that, too, and placement and whatnot, you know. But when people saw that you didn't have to do any masking, you just kind of overlap anything, everything and whatnot, you know. Easy stuff. Okay, now this is on matte paper too, remember? So I'm not usually used to doing that. I usually use more glossy. I love matte paper, that look though. I don't know why I don't do more of it. But it's the same type of thing. But it has a different feel to it though. Because it's a little bit more absorbent, so what I'm doing... It's the same type of thing, though. It just absor it, it absorbs your ink a little bit faster. Okay. So you kind of have to ink maybe a little bit more often. Okay, now see, I'm kind of taking this, streaking this in because it has those little striations. Do you see what's kind of developing here? See, I'm kind of blending that image out of the surrounding area like that, just in terms of tone. So see that little streak right there? It kind of becomes part of that image. So it's kind of like merging with the stamp itself, just in terms of tone. So we have those striations within the image. Be careful not to tone out your, you know, the moon or whatever, sun. Okay, now she has stamped it out in black. So I need to work up into that black. I need to use that same color again. The darkest color that has been used on a certain images or images I feel is the easiest thing to blend all of the different types of images together. Okay, you use that same vehicle in terms of common hue and value black in this case. Okay, so if the lightest thing or the darkest thing was a dark brown. I probably wouldn't use black, I'd probably use dark brown in the piece. It'd probably look more like a sepia print or something like that. Okay, see this area down here? I think that looks pretty good, but let's see what we can do about just bringing in a little bit of tone into this, keeping those kind of striations. It's kind of, on matte paper, it's kind of weird by the time I make a really long streak like that, <laughs> because it gets really dark on this. I'm kind of using the edge of my applicator too. 
you can watch my videos on using a paper towel and cotton balls for ink applications as well. And it works pretty good. I don't know if I've worked it on like a paper towel on matte paper. Man, I'm sure it would work. See how long I'm staying on this one, just one area right here? So I'm not trying to do this whole thing like this. I just stay on one little thing like that. And then I get that streak going across there. But doesn't that relate to this right here, okay? This is, it's, there's nothing different. I, this one's in a warm color scheme. On these two, I did it in cool color schemes, okay? Okay, now let's bring some of this tone down here in the corners because I'm going to move into black, so I want to create kind of a transition color, or tra uh, transition value, maybe more accurately. Okay, four corners in this case right here because I need to create enough space for that black that won't go in quite as far, maybe. I say maybe because I need to get to this um, uh, image a little bit more. Hmm. This is a good way to work for me. Uh, someone does all, you know, like 80% of the work and I just kind of finish it off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Kind of. It is kind of nice. Because I really love putting in details into pieces. And so it's kind of this, you know, having all of that foundation kind of colors and everything like that already set is... It's not a bad thing. Okay, anyways, do we see that kind of developing a little bit more? We have these little streaks, you know, kind of real indicative of a, uh, you know, those streaks within the sky. Like so. Okay. Very good. I like the mat, you know. Like I said, I don't do too many matte pieces too often. I have a dark brown here. Let me see if I can get to the dark brown. This is a walnut stain. It's fairly dark in terms of the distress inks, and there's probably some darker ones out there, but it's not real dark. It's more like a 50% or something like that in terms of darkness. If you have something else that you can use in between before you go to black, use, you know, use those. Kind of transition into them. If you don't see any difference, then, you know, it's no big deal. Then just move up to black or something like that, but... If you have them, you might as well use them. It can just make your pieces come out much richer looking as a result anyway. You know, the more colors you kind of layer down. This would be a perfect opportunity for some rip paper towel techniques on here too, you know, creating some additional clouds, okay? But I just want to keep it to the um, coloring right now because that's kind of where she's um, kind of developing her skills very quickly, I should say. See this right here? What did I do? I'm just taking it a little bit darker within the piece. I'm adding more texture, sure. But the thing that's really kind of bringing these pieces together is just taking it a couple extra notches, like say all the way to black, you know. I really like the way this one's going right here. It has kind of a pastelish look, you know, this matte 
right here. You can say, well, you can just use pastels. Well, you certainly can, you know. Those pastels have a really fantastic look to them. There's really been some amazing pieces being done with that. Okay, look at that now. Okay, now we're on black. Tested out in a little corner. Doesn't read as just stark black, okay? Because I'm just kind of wiping on a small amount of it at any given time, even straight from the pad. My pad isn't very really wet right now, though it's a little bit dry. Okay. Okay, I think that is it. What do you think? Okay, so see, I've tried to incorporate that small section of that stamp into the surrounding area, so I've taken these striations and I've kind of moved them out here, so we've added a little bit more variation out here. And like I said, that rip paper towel technique, if you know what I'm talking about, would look fantastic in here, too. But kind of an overall kind of framing of the piece, you know, would be excellent. I considered going in here with like a another yellow in here over the top of it, and that could be done. I don't know if it needs to be though, because I think she has it here in here, and if we spray this, the intensity will get. I don't know. It won't. I don't know if it'll double. It might. But I think it's already in here. She has achieved a beautiful saturation of that yellow down there. But here's what I like too. She knew not to tone that sun out, you know, the same degree, or unless it's a moon, <laughs> as this right here. So this stands out in terms of the uh, being the light source. I mean, she could have, you know, it'd be more subtle and whatnot. <clears throat> Excuse me, but. Um, Right now, it's it's kind of more of a focal point like that, you know. And on this one, I don't think I would bring in um, any of the white pigment ink, okay? Because this is a warmer light being cast in here. There's a little bit of white up here. I don't think this is needed, though. I think it's good as is. Same thing with the, the you know, the pen. I, I, I wouldn't put this pen down here. Um, because you don't have that white light shining off of it. The other things that could be done if you want to vary it a little bit, like up here, if you want to move into like a pinkish tinge or something like that, that might be kind of interesting. She actually has a little bit of that in there, so a little bit more uh, of a stronger transition, maybe a little bit more pink up here would be kind of interesting. Over the top of um, this ochre brown, it wouldn't read as pink. Let's just do it, okay? I found a... a <laughs> One of my uh, tips here that um, I was using for something that used pink in here. I think having a little bit more of a kind of a, a change in hue would be good. I'm not changing hues. I'm, I'm just kind of more altering it, okay, a little bit. Uh, a transition, I should say, more than change. See that right up there? Look at that intensity now. And see how it's a little bit different than the rest of the... Uh, the other area, maybe it would be, you know, kind of more indicative of a transitioning uh, sunset or whatnot. Ooh, that looks really good out here, kind of in this area. I didn't think, I don't know if it would uh, kind of uh, register at all. But I think it does show pretty good in a, in a kind of subtle way, though. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
Okay, how about that? This was um, rose pink, just a pale pink or something like that. But when you layer it, when you layer it over yellow, it's reading differently than this on a white piece of paper. Okay. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. I really like that pink. Maybe I'll add a little hint of it here and there, kind of in the darker areas too. Uh, something like that. All right, so let's take a look here and let's see. I don't know, you can do a before and after, you know, using the toggle switch on all of these, but um, look at this right here, okay? Um, <clears throat> a little bit more of a, a stronger transition in here. I think that's wrong. More of a subtle transition. <laughs> okay, so I have some of that light blue in here as opposed to it just going like medium blue and then white, okay? Uh, transitions using imagery, okay? So taking this color scheme out here and adding it to my imagery and including that in there. Uh, soft light in the terms of the pigment ink application in addition to the crisp light and with the white dots. You can use a gel pen or one of those paint pens like I recently purchased. Basically the exact same thing with that one that's going on in here. I just brought in more. See that really green tree in here. I brought some of those same tones down here. I think it looks real watercolory-ish, you know. So look at those little crisp little areas in there to complement the softer areas, right? So you have that little, I don't know if it's quite yin and yang, it's, you know, they're both light, but they're, one's soft and one's crisp, okay? One's more subtle and one's more apparent, okay? So a little tone around in here, seeing those little kind of highlights on those rocks like that, it kind of brings some of those things out, making the t area behind the cabin a little bit darker, makes the cabin pop out. I really love the foreground, her kind of um, lighter, dark um, impressions with the reeds in addition to the uh, the darker crisp ones with the um, Versafine and back to this one um, with the warm tones um, and kind of the darker additions to match the value of the impression itself. Okay, the light, you know, source impression, okay? So we have these little striations out here, like that, and I blended those into the surrounding area using that same value, but I didn't jump into just black. I built it up through the lighter tones and thus achieving kind of a richer surface area as well as darker in areas. I didn't just darken everything like that. It's just kind of adding it down in those horizontal um, kind of strokes going across the page from both left and right. You know, I don't go left and right. You know, when I'm applying them, it's, you know, top down like that. I, I switch it around and I come in like that, but it ends up reading as horizontal, you know, with the viewing angle. So anyways, um, Three collaborative pieces. Thank you so much, uh, Julia, for sending these in. I really enjoyed working with them. And I could see, kind of, I don't know. I, I mean, she took a good photographs of these, and I, would, I suggested certain things um, to do. But kind of when you see kind of my written description on suggestions on kind of the strengths and what's going on with them really well, and uh, suggestions on what can be done it's just easier to show someone because you can also see the results um, of what those suggestions might be um, in the you know in the final product here. So uh, I don't know, I'm just kind of looking over these again. I really like some of these little things in here. <laughs> and like I said, sometimes I can't achieve them myself because I I don't know. We all kind of have our own little techniques and whatnot. So um, yeah, I like this kind of real watery, colory 
piece right in here and look. And I don't know, this one right here kind of uh, got me working on. I don't know what kind of paper that is, um, but it looks pretty good. So my suggestion for her would be to spray all these um, and to intensify the colors and the saturations of them. If this does dry um, dull, um, I don't know, if it stays as vibrant as it looks right now, then I don't know, you can just put them in a binder or whatever and protect them and whatnot, but um, anyways, fun stuff to work on. All right, so that being said, if anyone has um, pieces or they're just kind of learning how to do certain things and if you kind of run into something and you want to see um, kind of my idea of what can be done to them either to kind of increase the, um, maybe the visual vocabulary that's going on in them or to refine what you've kind of, you know, already done, um, go ahead and feel free to send them on in to me. Now, if you're, you know, if you have your own really highly developed style, you know, at some point in time, it just becomes kind of more of a preference thing. There's no set thing like I, you know, look at some pieces and I just don't think there's, I don't have any suggestions for them because I think in their own way, they've made a complete visual statement and done it in their style so it's just you know it would come down to preference or something like that on these ones when she's just kind of starting out there are some minor tweaks you know that you can do and i didn't do anything drastic okay i've most you know ways i've just kind of introduced this kind of streak and i don't know if i did it down there but um you know kind of from the outside edge and and just breaking up of certain areas you know just where we don't have the kind of this abrupt single source light um like that you just kind of bisect it and trisect it and whatnot you know in very subtle ways in some ways and some places you know you can do a very established streak like that but you build it up shadows in the shadow areas to anchor down your um, objects and uh, just kind of the blending in of more imagery and one of the things the easiest thing that anyone can do is if they've stamped out some of their images in black you just tip the edges with that same value okay don't come in all the way in there and just have it black and then white okay you transition it okay so you have a little bit darker out there and then it's transitions in here it becomes lighter and lighter because you've used your darker colors become more perimeter oriented so blend in things like your blacks okay where it doesn't look like just a solid shape of black right here it's always kind of that movement like this okay and then you're kind of blending it in like this okay of whatever color you're working in okay so darker on the edge and lighter in the middle like that or wherever your center so transitions okay <clears throat> all right thanks so much for watching hope you enjoyed this one as much as i enjoyed doing this and i enjoyed seeing the results i love kind of working and seeing what i can do to certain pieces of my own so it was really interesting working with someone else's work and kind of their own signature you know everyone has kind of a different application of ink that they use it's like a signature and um and touch even someone that's kind of learning and you know very early on they have their own kind of feel to it okay uh if you have any questions drop me a note in the comment section and thanks as always for tuning in to the stampscapes channel